Considering the circumstances, yeah, there are dire circumstances. So, from yeah. last I heard from her uh, newly husband, 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 her newly husband, yeah, yeah her newly husband, husband. yeah, that's yeah. what I call it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what was he telling you? Mm. Yeah, you know, drink up, drink up. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. He was telling me um, uh, there was untold of monsters in Saskatchewan, actually. Oh shit! Yep. And yeah, other than the locals? Yeah. Uh, oh no, that's them. Oh okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, 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 she's doing well. But what right. do you have uh, on the docket for us today, Kelly? Well, I don't know. It's your show, so what do you have? Well, <laughs> I have. Uh, we could do Mad Libs. You want to do Mad Libs? We could. Um, I'm gonna. You okay? You called my bluff. I do have something on the docket. Okay, fuck! I knew you did. <laughs> Where's the if, bit? With your permission. You may. Yeah, all right. So, because I think we should address the elephant in the room here. Yes. Which, which is it's that about time. I think in sometimes in describing this show, the word improv has been thrown around. Uh, <laughs> if you can believe it, not everything here is scripted. But I think improv <laughs> gives a, a, it does give people like some expectations. Yeah, it gets them horny. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's 100% <laughs> yeah. what I was going for. Yep. And we can't get people too horny because. Right. I mean, what happened last time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't speak of the incident. That's right. The lost episode. <laughs> um, but I decided that uh, we'll, you know, keep people on their toes. I figured what's the, what's the opposite of improv? Uh, a, a planned child. <laughs> <laughs> a plant child? <laughs> a planned child. But yeah, a plant child too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have the next best thing, which is reading shit from a list. Oh, great. Yes. Yeah. I'm in. So, oh God, I've lost the title. All right. So this is a, this is a list I came across, which is a list of deaths in London from like, let's go with 1635. Okay. It was around there. All right. And I don't know, there's, there's a couple thousand on here. And, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, there's a give couple, me, give me like sorry. the top 400. <laughs> there's not a couple thousand causes of death. Okay. There's a couple thousand okay. deaths. Cause it tells you how many of each. Right. Okay. All right. So th these are them in alphabetical order. I think I think we're going to learn a lot here today. I can't wait. So starting at the top, uh, we've got abortive and stillborn, uh, classic 17th century shit. Yeah. Uh, 445. I really wish I'd gotten the total, but let's say it's 5,000. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yep. So we're 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 off on a bleak foot to, right off the get go. Yeah. And that, this is not a fun one yet, but no, I'm waiting for it. Next one. Affrighted. Affrighted? Yeah. Like to be afeared of something? I don't have any more context than what's it's on here. Affrighted. But <laughs> affrighted. Do you, do you want to guess the number for that one? Oh, man. Well, it's not number one because number one was stillborn. Is that the. Oh, no. This is an alphabetical order. Yeah. Oh, oh. Alphabetical. So there was 445 deaths for stillborn. Stillborn. And then affrighted. Yeah. It's either insanely high or insanely low. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go insanely high. Five. 
thousand. One. <laughs> one. Fuck. I was going to say two. Yeah, you get right. no points for that one. Damn. That blows. Right. Uh, another one right over the plate. Aged. Aged. Yeah, that'll happen, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's, Inevitably. There's, there's, there's no riffing to do on that. Uh, <laughs> 628 for those. Next one. Ague. Ague. Do you know what that is? No. But, uh, ague, ague. No, no, I have no idea. But give me, give me the number and then I'll tell you what it is. 43. 43? Yeah. Mm. Um, I think that it's got to be like a in London, like, you know, we're talking about the Industrial Revolution, maybe like a glue factory had like exploded and slowly consumed 43 people. Oh, so like it's a glue, a glue. Yeah. All right. What, got, what, 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 wait, what was it? Yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> we can get Josh to look it up. I gave him a microphone for this exact reason. Yeah, do that. Josh, find out what a glue is. And also die of frighted, affrighted. Well, we know what that is. It's just fear-based dying. Just, you're affrighted. Like, I don't know what else you want from that. Yeah. All right. Uh, there's, there's nothing. Yeah. We've got another one. Uh, very old-timey. Uh, we can't get look up all these because we'll, we'll be here all Producer night. interruption. Yeah. Ague is a fever such as malaria. Wow. Oh. All right. Well, I thought it would have been higher. 43. No, everyone was too busy being stillborn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> busy, busy, busy. Yeah. Next, we got <laughs> Apoplex and Megrum. Uh, they'll sound like just like biblical characters to me, but... Megrum? Yeah, Apoplex and Sounds Megrum. More like a goblin name to me, but... Megrum? Yeah, write those down for, oh, that's for when you need yeah, goblin for, characters. Yeah, when we run into goblins. All right, here's another good one. Bit with a mad dog. Ooh, sick. Uh, am I guessing the number? Yeah, you guess the number. Uh, how many people actually die from getting wait is this like getting rabies like a mad bit dog? with a mad dog mad i'm dog. reading off okay. the cards here it's like mad dog uh 12 one fuck <laughs> why hit me with these ones okay. yeah well you know there's a pattern uh bleeding boring uh bloody flux, bloody flux scouring and flux <laughs> bloody flux yeah that's <laughs> like it's included in the list sense. with regular flux so right uh the big one 348 uh another boring one bruised issues sores ulcers 28 okay burnt and scalded Ooh. uh give me 200 five okay i'm on i'm on to this now I yeah God. uh we got burst and rupture a lot of these have this like buddy burst cop duo rupture. style yeah hey tune in for a new episode of burst and rupture <laughs> one's a one's a good Cop and one's a bad cop. cop. Oh, you're gonna love it. At the time, it was original. Yeah. Next one, cancer and wolf, and wolf. Yeah. Put those together. Yeah. Hmm. Like someone, I think someone said that this is actually canker, but it's much funnier if you just. No, the next one is canker. So yeah, cancer and wolf. So I, I think that's when you why? have. I think why, it's why when you're, this category of like burst and rupture. Kind of get it. Cancer and wolf. Well, I think what happened to ten people is they had cancer I fuck that up terminal as hell go out into the woods to find peace mauled by a wolf they, they can smell the, the cancer yeah yeah that's a Infamous true fact about wolves everyone knows wolves uh yeah i just bought the next one canker that's another one boo okay. here's a here's a here's a banger child bed <laughs> child bed child bed I can't help but imagine this being like a piano out of a window situation, but child bed, one, one. Wait, how is it like a piano out of a window? Like, you know, that's, I feel like that's a classic gag. Like a piano falls out of the windows, crushes someone, and then like... You're saying like a bed falls onto a child? Yes. <laughs> okay. One. 171. <laughs> so whatever it is, it's happening a lot. Goddamn. Yeah. More than cancer. More than cancer. Yeah, that's 100%. Wow. Yeah. And this wolf. is this because the reason we have so much cancer now is that we're so healthy that you live long enough to get cancer and be mauled by a wolf. Yeah. Yeah. Back then, it's like you won't get cancer because before then, a child bed is going to land on you falling out of a window. 100%. That's just how it was. Yeah. The cities were very dense. People threw out their manure out the windows, their child bed out the windows. Yeah. Don't throw the child out with the uh, bed. Yeah. <laughs> I always say. All right. We got another one. This one is intriguing. Chrysomes and infants. 
2,206. No, like 2,268. It is the biggest one on this list. I mean, I mean, infants are more deadly than a child bed. I yeah. would say. Yeah. Wow. The the numbers don't lie. <laughs> the numbers don't lie. Yeah. Uh, more conventional ones: cold and cough, 55. Colic stone and strangury. That's probably just normal. Uh, 56. Consumption, big one. Classic disease. Thousand. Yeah. Pretty more or less. Oh, nice. let's just say you're right. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, Getting it. Yeah. Convulsion, 241. Here's a great one. Cut of the stone. Cut of the stone. I think that's a Styx album. Yes. Uh, or, I mean, low-hanging fruit, Rolling Stones. But uh, give me 14. Yeah, five. Not bad. Okay. All right. I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting better. The next one, Dead in the Street and Starved. <laughs> now, I wonder if it's... Well, hey, how does that count as a... If he's already dead... Well, I assumed it's in that order. Yeah, me too. You died in the street, and, and then, then you starved. starved. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Who made... What, who, where are you getting this from? What website is this? This is just a picture that somebody was sharing around, and um, they, okay. they captioned it with, like, deaths in London, 16, whatever. Right. Okay. Yeah. This explains a lot. Like, it could have been made up, but... Do we really want to live in that reality? No. This is Wikipedia. From yeah, knowledge. that's Heard. exactly right. Uh, dropsy and swelling, 267. Drowned, 34. Executed and pressed to death, 18. 18. What? How yeah. is childbed just trumping all of these classics? I'm telling you, childbed was the, the silent killer. This is, this is a black, black horse scenario. Now we've got one that I think really... This is a modern parallel to this because the next one is falling sickness. Falling sickness. Yes. Yeah. All right. Like, I think that's a thing that happens now when like, you know, like a Russian oligarch dies. Yes. Because <laughs> it's like, how, how, how did this guy uh, die? He was criticizing the regime. Oh, uh, you know, he was sick. Well, you know, like witnesses said he fell out of an eight story window. Yeah, he had falling sickness. Yeah, falling and shot in head first. Yeah. And then fell down. Death. So <laughs> this is this is an old disease, it turns out. Yeah. Yeah. Fever, big one, eleven oh eight. Ooh, nice. Fistula, fistula. Later, what? What is fistula? Uh, that's that's a metal band for sure. Hundred percent. And they yeah. killed thirteen people. <laughs> Fuck yeah, they were so hard yeah. back then. Flocks and smallpox. Smallpox, big favorite. Five thirty one. Uh, French pox. What do you think French pox is? Uh, it's definitely fancier than smallpox. At, um, in a lot of ways, yeah. Yeah. It's way more pretentious. It makes you pretentious and then you die. Yeah. That's it. No, that's the fun one from when like diseases used to be racist. So everyone just, <laughs> everyone just called syphilis whatever country they didn't like. Right. So if you're in England, you called syphilis French pox. But if you're in France, it was like Dutchman's disease. And it was just kind of like a nice like robrose of racism. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Gangrene, really gout, um, big names, small numbers, five and four. Mm-hmm. Grief, 11. You know, like being feared. That, that's kind of exactly what I expect. That one's definitely gone up. I think. Yeah, <laughs> I like this one a lot. Jaundies, which I think is just like, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just like the Australian slang for for jaundice. Yeah, yeah, because they have to like make everything cute. So they it's like, to, uh, had luck, mate. You got the jaundies. Yeah, that's right. An abbreviation that does not make it shorter. <laughs> yeah, but it makes it makes it cuter. It, it's nicer when like the doctor gives it news to you. <laughs> Oh, that's not so bad. You yeah. got the jaundice. Yeah. Actually sounds nice when you say it like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot better than childbed, probably. Yeah. Uh, another baffling one, jaw fame. Never know what that is. <laughs> jaw fame? Yeah. Only eight people, not worth our time. Mm. Uh, imposthume. Imposthume? Yeah. <laughs> like, I think it's when I you... I feel like that's got to be like when you're in costume as a possum. <laughs> like... Oh, I was thinking like when, when an imposter was like impersonating your costume, maybe because you faked your death. Yeah. I don't know what, where the lethality comes in. <laughs> it's just like, man, I just, every time I hear these, I want to add like an extra thing on the beginning now. It's just like hit by a train plus imposthumed. <laughs> okay. That leads well into the next one. Okay, this one okay. is wonderful. Killed by several accidents. <laughs> <laughs> oh so embarrassing yeah <laughs> it's like it's like the simpsons thing when like you know like the ambulance hits the rock you fall all the way down the canyon yeah and then you land in like a um 
a like truck carrying pillows, but then it falls off the cliff. And hundred percent. Yeah. This was always happening in 17th century London. hundred percent. Slapstick you, yeah. was, has always been around. Yeah. Cause you'd like slip on like someone's like, you know, like human waste they dumped into the street, hit your head on the cobblestone, horse tramples on you. Just endless cartoon shit. <laughs> 46 for that one. King's evil. Mm. Oh man. If this is me, then I would say a lot, but King's evil. Yeah. It's going to be four or something like that. It's 38. And what yeah. really got me about this one was that there was somebody in the comments who was like, oh, that one is an old timey name. That's just Scrofula. Ah, now I know less. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, this didn't help me at all. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, Thanks, so. Internet. That was great. Yeah. Uh, lethargy. Oh. <laughs> Why do give me a number on that one? <laughs> uh... Mm, give me a crisp crisp 300 two damn it <laughs> you fall for the same I trap know. every time well, it's just there's Lucy no, pulling there's the no football. pattern and there's no rhyme or reason to these that's categories fair. uh liver grown i think it's a prog rock band mm. big big liver eh yeah uh four 87 mm. you're brutal at this that suck it's almost like i don't even know what half of these are <laughs> how about look, this one's obvious lunatic Ah, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. Uh, 40. Five. Okay, made away themselves. I think the people just escaped. <laughs> they just, yeah. they, oh, they like unplugged. They just, yeah. yeah, yeah, they're off the grid. Yeah. Because back then it was easy as hell to disappear. Yes. So really when they're doing the survey, it's like, oh yeah, man, like, oh, he's going off to Ireland. All right, Markham is dead. I don't see him again. <laughs> Basically dead. Yeah. He made, made off... What, what is it? The exact phrase? Made away themselves. Made away themselves. I mean, I think it's suicide, yeah. but that's way less funny. I, no. Yeah, that's not as funny. Also, yeah. why do your Londoners have Australian accents now? You know what? Well, accents were different back then. They shift over time. This is before the Australians got there. Yeah. Yeah. To London. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Measles, boring one. 80. Murdered, uh, seven. Less than what? I think. Yeah. Well, okay. Sorry. This one actually says, uh, murthered. So it could be different. <laughs> murdered? murdered? I don't know. I mean, half of these categories were murder. Well, okay. Tell me if this one is murder. Overlaid and starved at nurse. Like, is the nurse doing it? I mean, I think that means that the baby has flipped over and the nurse did not notice and then just the baby just well, made away still, with himself it's still you know? happening way less than child bed so yeah well the child bed is like a major contender like, very right. impressive child bed let's blow through a few of these palsy 25 piles one plague eight planet planet <laughs> yeah <laughs> mm. how many things we got for planet <laughs> <laughs> oh man like 12 12 that's a it's 13 13 yeah nice that's yeah. right you thanks, get a free thanks, beer guys. on them yeah. that feels good it feels good um yeah. now could you explain what being murdered by a planet looks like i mean i feel like we're gonna see a lot more of it with climate change yeah so you know like typhoons uh it's the, not a different planet it's, it could be yeah like just slams like a really small planet yeah just hitting like one neighborhood with 13 people in it. <laughs> this happened once. Yeah, they posthum. They, yeah. They die. Uh, pleurisy and spleen, 36. Purples and spotted fever, 38. Purples. Deadly purples. Um, oh, what, what was it? 38? 38. 38. Uh, Quincy, don't, nothing funny about that. Seven. Uh, Rising of the Lights. I think that's an Alanis Morissette album. <laughs> 98. Yeah. Oh, wow. Sciatica one. I like this one. Scurvy and itch. Ooh. I feel like you're throwing in the itch to throw me off. No. Well, this... they, they have it here. It's one entry. Lethal itch. I think it was because they were, they were in big denial scurvy, right? Because like, people had figured out, okay, if you eat fruit, you won't get scurvy. And everyone was like, nah, fuck it. And then continue to get scurvy for like 500 years. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there was a little bit of like hand waving where they're like, oh yeah, man, this guy's on our, on our boat and hasn't been eating any fruit. Teeth are falling out. looks like shit. And they're like, all right, might be the scurvy. It could be the itch. But does he have itch? Yeah. 
I guess so. Yeah. Scurvy and itch. They're, they're, they're just really trying to undercount the scurvy deaths by being like, hey, man, a lot of these people are itchy. Look, itch, you're not child bed. Just, just relax. All right. Um, you ready for this one? What? what Suddenly. They? All of a sudden, they died. <laughs> uh, That's all it says. Suddenly. suddenly. <laughs> I mean, it happened so quickly. So uh, I'm assuming this is another byproduct of the, they're just doing a census where somebody goes around and be like, how'd he die? Suddenly. Let's <laughs> write that down. Uh, surfeit, dunno, swinepox. Y'all can tell boring. me how many people died for suddenly. Oh, oh sorry. How many do you I, think? I really want to know. Yeah, uh, you got to guess. Uh, 12, 62. 62, right? More than you more, think. more than you they're think. not. They're, they were not killed of a frighted, but they were killed of suddenly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, surfeit, no idea what that is, 86, swinepox, 6. How many people do you think died of teeth? Teeth? Hmm. Teeth. Of being, being attacked by teeth or having... Teeth. having Look, teeth. I don't have oh, man, the context. Like, <laughs> I just have the word teeth. Because I know... A shockingly high number of deaths. I, I w okay, because if it's like gum disease, like gingivitis, it could be quite a bit. It but, could be. That might be um, it. But if it's being... Bitten. I don't know. Two thousand. Uh, four four seventy. Four seventy. That's okay. like our tenth highest so far. Very nice. But that's distinct from thrush and sore mouth. Forty. Hmm. Uh, I would put that in with teeth. Yeah. Uh, last ones are pretty whatever. Timpani thirty teen. Tissick. I'm pretty sure it's just a county in England. Thirty four. Uh, vomiting. One highly embarrassing that sucks. to be that one person <laughs> vomiting and pooping your pants. Yeah, one. let's let's give you one more guess here. How many think people you died from worms? Worms <sighs> easily a hundred. Yeah, sure. Let's say you're right. Hey, that feels yeah. oh nice. Yeah, we did it. Cool, man. How do you feel? I feel looser. I I feel I feel like I have learned less. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just in general about. I just feel how more afraid work. of childbed and teeth than i ever have yeah actually i feel not so bad about cancer or wolves feel yeah like. yeah you're doing great i mean like i'm only worried about the wolf if i get cancer yeah but even then it was just 10 what's i mean there's so many people what are yeah. the chances right honestly a lot of these read like i feel like this is just shit that killed people in dreams this honestly just feels like because you get killed like, by your teeth and dreams all the time i bet i feel like this is just like a list of like two farmers they're just like sitting down watching the cows and you're like how many people you reckon got dead by teeth or oh, probably 42 all right i had that down <laughs> and like this is just like a feelings list i don't feel like there's any actual data to back any of this up yeah i think you're right yeah yeah all right we solved well, you, it okay fuck <laughs> that's all i brought for the docket that's it eh yeah you got you got the rest of it right you got the other hour and a half yeah. of totally of content i kind of want to do the mad lib we could do the mad lib well should we bring out guests for that uh yes yeah you can't do that is oh you have to do a jaunty dance to the song oh yeah oh it's about well, if you want to just go ahead and flick on your, your mic there, you can tell us all the stuff that we didn't know there. It's it's up. I think there's a flick. Yeah, a flicky doodle. Hey. Bada bing, bada boom. And posthum has to do with pus and shit. That's like the only it's the only thing that I had to say. Goodbye. Oh, okay. Well what do you think child bed is? I want to hear child bed theories. <laughs> 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 there were some theories said. Um, <laughs> it's really dark. <laughs> I mean, the the topic is inherently dark, but you just do. But how do you feel about it? What do you think a parent might say to explain away smothering their kid in their bed? Ah, oh no, right. And like, oh, the, and like the police summon. They're like, so what happened? And it's just yeah, like, the bed did. The bed, I don't know. Bed, child bed situation. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay. That's, I like that. That's yeah. It's kind of like the sense. falling disease one. It's like, listen, the kid died of falling disease. Just these things happen. It's getting more realistic and dark of the world. Yeah. 
<laughs> I think mean, honestly, that's probably half these. Like you smoke some on the back ahead of the rock, and like you know, the little local knight comes around. Like what happened? It's like planet, planet, planet got him. Tiny the rock planet. did it. Yep, king's death. <laughs> evil, uh, king, king's evil. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. King's evil, right? Yeah. It could mean anything. It's like, it's almost like, ah, well, you know, that's just how it is. You stepped on my toe while walking around town. King's death. King's death. Yeah. King's evil. <laughs> Honorable death. I actually did look up King's death's scrofula. It's gross as hell. You got all these like boils and it's like a tuberculosis thing. The, oh, hey, hey, shit. hey, Shana, what do you think? Yeah, what is child bed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on will work better. <laughs> I think childbed is probably like the sister component to the abortions and stillborns. Mm. It's another one of those ones that could have been clumped together. But yeah. Yeah. There were a bunch of the ones that sounded like umbrella, like the, the cast an umbrella for what a lot of actual th the things actually might have been within it. So, yeah, yeah there's, there was a lot of that. Be like, it's like the explaining way of like. Child bed. Yeah, child bed. I felt like the umbrella though, like it would it should have been more. It was like it was like being stabbed, two, being shot, four, murder, one. It's like what? <laughs> but those are all forms of murder. All the murders were just the people that didn't have an alibi. And, and you uh, know what right. goes great with dogs? Dogs just love cancer. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they feast on it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I actually I'm now imagining that like they had like an annual general meeting where they had to work out like what the official categories are. They're just like there's these like camps of people who are like at each other's throats about it. Like, no, 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 we have to put cancer and wolf together. This is effectively the same death. <laughs> Name one difference between being killed by cancer and killed by wolf. You can't. They're both cute sometimes and vicious other times. <laughs> and then this type of argument would go on for days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like, wow. <laughs> if it was uh, Tuesday, then the, why would the wolves be even around? We did the, the sacrament. They couldn't be around. And, and just like be like tons and tons of uh, old wives tales. And yeah, this is the kind of like etymology research that is needed, but so unnecessary. And I do not want to partake in yeah. of like, how did we get to cancer wolf? <laughs> I mean, if oh, you wanna... maybe, maybe it was a wolf with cancer. That's very. That would make. Oh, it's just one. They that, all that, test that, people. That makes, that how, makes how, sense. How, how many people uh, was wolf cancer? What was the number of how? I think many? it was like ten. 10. Okay, so a cat, a wolf with cancer, killed ten people. I think a wolf with cancer could still kill ten people. Absolutely. I. I yeah. I think that's it. Absolutely. <laughs> Especially with all the people just starving in the streets, but not not dead yet. No, sorry, dead in the streets, but not starved yet. Yeah. No, they starved after. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Yeah. Suddenly. Right. Well, I can't think of a better uh, jarring tonal shift than to go from that to... You want some Mad Libs? Is that what's happening? Yeah, we're going to go from death to the opposite of death. Let's do it. Which is, yeah. of course, love. The life and love of Mad Libs. And while he's getting that ready, do, do we want to talk about who you guys are? Uh, I'm Luke. Hello. Yeah. And what are you here to promote? Nothing. Oh. Are you don't, you don't want your brand associated with this? Uh, which stuff? Okay, uh, I have been a DJ for some time, still do it, but corporate job is in flux. I, the name is High Sobriety. Uh, Shana and I, who you will hear her speak and tell her side as well, uh, are with a group called Rhizome, uh, which throws community-based events every now and again. Yeah, you just did a rebrand, right? We formerly were Mossy, yeah, Mossy uh, Fellowship, and now we are Rhizome. That is R H I Z O M E. Do you want to talk about that change? I've pivoted to sincerity here. Okay, uh, another jarring tonal shift. Yeah, give me give me some time because I I realize now I have to print off the Mad Lib. Okay, got it. Sorry. All right, tell us all about that. Okay, uh, uh, Sh Shana, uh, uh, would you like to maybe say why? Like, I think you're more eloquent in the the why we felt like we no longer wanted to go by Mossy Fellowship. Yeah. Um. So. Our, okay, got it. Um. So our group kind of started uh organically between friends on a university campus and. Uh, they wanted to put a name on their friend group that was hanging out and like throwing cool shows and stuff. Um, and it kind of turned into this hand-me-down project through a few generations of the friend group. And over the course of a few years, we realized that a lot of us were sort of uncomfortable with yeah. 
the word because it's a pan-indigenous term that means thank you, I believe. Um, and none of us in the group had a cultural connection to that word. And it just didn't feel right to be using it anymore. Um, so these conversations honestly took years. Um, and when we decided we wanted to come up with a new name, we talked about it for probably another year. Um, and we chose rhizome, which is a type of root. Um, it shoots off from the top root of a main plant and travels underground and comes up and blooms into a new plant that's still attached to the old one, but is new and distinct. Um, and it was just kind of perfect because when we started looking into it, we found out that it had a second definition um, in like philosophy and computer science, which is funny because computer science is where a lot of the original people who started this group made like their first connections. So um, the Cole's notes of the philosophical one is it's a concept in post-structuralism describing a non-linear network that connects any point to any other point. That's the Cole's notes of the philosophy one. I think it also killed like 15 people in 17th century London, <laughs> just dead of rhizome. <laughs> It was 19. Oh, sorry. I, there were a lot of numbers on that list. Well, like five of those went to, it just so happened to be on a children's bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the stats got skewed. Yeah. Anything that kills you on a children's bed, like a wolf with cancer kills you in a children's bed, goes Still into child childhood. Bed. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Which uh, at the end of the day, I, I think it might come back to the credibility of the of that entire uh, it's not a poll the research sorry researching quotations that you have conducted for the deaths in the 1600s i think that childbed holds a varied amount of other things how many smallpox are under childbed uh we kind of skimmed smallpox because it was boring but no it was a much smaller number i do remember that uh no child bed is 171 uh smallpox and flocks which i guess is being like trampled oh, like, by sheep like 500 531 yeah right oh, okay yeah. fair fair yeah this is rigorous like it's now the next question it's a picture i found online well the next question <laughs> about that illness is how many of them happen to have died on children's bed but it didn't go to children's bed well i think there's a hierarchy so like <laughs> first and foremost did they die in a child bed if they did goes in that category and then it kind of trickles down so if they died of smallpox in a child's bed, do they get classified as dying in child's bed or with smallpox? I think child bed, because that's the only reason child bed is so high and smallpox <laughs> yes. is so low. Agreed. I still think the really dark side of that is, is present. All yes, right. I well, mean, we'll get Josh to look that one up for us. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. But to what, you, to what you were saying, like that's sort of a, a thing it's that coming. happens a lot in like the electronic music community, isn't it? Where like... We did an episode of this at a festival called Inshallah, which is like a huge butchering of Arabic. <laughs> and even Shambhala is mispronounced. And I don't think anyone going there knows what the word means. Oh, that's I, I, let's let's give him credit. I, I'll say one person knew what Inshallah meant. One. That's something. <laughs> it's not that, much. That is fair. something. <sighs> Speaking of electronic music, because it has been a while, but we have had these discussions in these events that you guys have been doing, because you've done some like now post the beginning of COVID, right? Like, yes. Yeah. Have you worked in any of my suggestions vis-a-vis -vis, like guitars, mandolins, hurdy-gurdies? No. No? Nope. Well, the, 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 biggest, <laughs> the biggest, biggest detriment to most of that is the last show that we did was a collaboration with Cheshire Productions, i.e. we only had one stage, and we were, we were hell. And those all sound pretty heavenly. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, we um, couldn't. On the note of strange string instruments, I just got strings for my bazooki. Um, oh, that's an instrument. Fuck yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. It, they're not on it yet. Um, I need help to do that. So it's on the list. Yeah. Well, I mean, they say the first step is the hardest. It's getting the bazooki. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I had help. Yeah, just bring it a little closer. Okay. Sorry. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll give it. So the most useful thing anyone else ever told me about microphones, but they're like, you just got to imagine you're sucking a dick. Like you wouldn't do it like this, right? It's got to be pointing right <laughs> at you, like just gunning for you. And I think got we can it. all learn from that. Words of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> And speaking of sucking a dick. Oh, yeah. 
What about it? How are you doing over there? <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Ouch. Uh, the Mad Lib is coming. Just uh, need to bridge it off, but... <laughs> That's what you were doing. <laughs> so in- I, had to, I had to forward the email to that, that dude again, and it's, it's coming. Mad Libs are coming in 2023. Yeah. <laughs> Tune in. All right. Well, then, what did you guys bring for the docket? What kind of what kind of gimmicks do you have in your pocket? <laughs> uh, not much, but we did have a one interesting thing that we never actually asked the server about at a dinner. It's an oh. important question. <laughs> it, it, it I'm enraptured. I'm so ready for it. So I was going to make an argument about how many syllables are in a word. Which which just word? any word? Just in no, general? no, a specific word. Huey. How many syllables? Two. Two. That's that's right. That, yeah, sorry, sorry. How many? I I, I would say two. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was making an argument that because the Y is pretty soft, and if you were to imagine saying the word in like pretty much any other language, it would not be two. It would be like hui. And yeah, the, and it, <laughs> yeah. And then, in another yeah. language, I buy that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like his question was in English. I was prepared to try and say Huey with one syllable, but you <laughs> nailed it. That's pretty much how it was. Yeah, going. that's that's how I responded to her with exactly hey. that sound. I was like, no, what you just described of another another language is, uh, if we're trying to do it like that, it doesn't sound like the word we're trying to do, which is hui. Like it's just yeah. it's no. It's like the sound of mild excitement. And that tr- well and truly is close to the end of our docket that we came unaware of and unprepared for. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> you know, listen, you're not the only ones who are unprepared. Oh, uh, oh yeah. I, I guess uh, I've had random thoughts of theories. That Hell yeah. Okay. Theories. Let's so, hear them. So I've noticed a decent amount of sample size evidence of uh, people over the age of 50. Yeah. Always. When they first meet a new cat, mm-hmm. it's a girl. When they first well, meet cats are girls, dogs, dogs are boys. We know that. Yeah. It, it, that's my point. That's, that's just science. That's exactly my, okay, that's exactly <laughs> my point. But anybody over a certain age, knee jerk, and even after learning, it's a boy cat, it's a girl dog, etc. They'll still be like, dog. Oh, he's so cute. Cat. Oh, she's gorgeous. And it's 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 something I've noticed of a certain age group that will always do that so i feel like there's a clear exception to this rule in cat people and dog people if you're like a hardcore cat person then like you're not going to care about what gender of a dog is and like you're going to be open-minded about cats and vice versa for the hardcore dog people so she sounds like a bit of a cat supremacist instead of an equalist (laughs) cat supremacy (laughs) An equist, like a horse person? Equalist. Because <laughs> those people, like if you're a horse person, you can get out. Like, <laughs> I said, not welcome at this show. I said equalist. Those okay. people aren't welcome here. I remember, I read the email. Oh, okay. <laughs> you read the email, you just took like three weeks to respond to it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly it's okay, you guys kept us guessing, which was good. You kept us guessing up until the moment I said, do you want are to your, come on stage? Are your toes stronger now? Because we kept you on them. I uh, I got really bad joints, so I think I just kind of strained my toes. Like, they just hurt worse than ever now. <laughs> did you stay on them, though? Uh, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of still on Perfect. them. Perfect. You're still on your toes, which means we did our job. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Been bamboozled here. If you're still on your toes, that's probably why you have bad joints. That's correct. Well, you guys never gave me a reason to get off them. That's what he's saying. Yeah, but like like a reason that would work for you. Because frankly, us, a lot of others may have uh, not stayed on their toes, but I guess you love us so much that you stayed on them, even to right now, which is, that's a little hurtful. All right. Okay, thank you. I flatten them out now. I'm beginning to relax. Uh, (laughs) Birds, though, birds are fucking crazy. So the... (laughs) But because I knew somebody sure are who, fucking crazy, crazy, <laughs> wild. I had I knew somebody who like owned a parrot uh, for like a decade or whatever and was like, yeah. So for the longest time, I was like, yeah, this is my parrot. His name is, you know, like Steve, let's say it was and was like, oh, yeah, we're starting to think maybe maybe it's a female parrot. Like, you just don't really know. It's, oh, just, it's just kind of a crapshoot what your parrot is. Is this a Mad Libs yes. delivery? It sure is. I'll so, believe it when I see sorry, it. Sorry, sorry. Back, back on target. No, that's pretty much it. Like, it's it's a whole other rabbit hole after the cat-dog thing. It's just like, what's oh. this bird? Dunno. Might lay an egg, might not. Uh, I do understand that the cat-dog debate is inherently specious to every other species. I'm aware. 
Okay, but but birds are like feathery lizards. Like they don't have like the same like parts that. Oh yeah, they got cloacas. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like an all-in-one, like hole. Yeah. Sitch. Cloacas are wild. Like it's just they are. It's, you just don't know what's coming out the, down the chute. <laughs> Which is I don't know. It keeps you in your toes, right? And you can take bets. That could be the casino game. Yeah. You gamble well, on what's gonna come out. But what fucked me up about this parrot was like, she was just like, it's kind of ambivalent. We think it's female. We're just, we're just used to it being male. Like, I don't know. I guess it's just no way of knowing unless you like try to breed it. Respect. Do we have some ad libs coming? We, we certainly do. We are here. Yeah. Oh, but we only got through one coked up theory. Does anybody else have a completely? <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I disrupted your flow. Oh, no, no. I never had any. It's all good. Um, <laughs> should we just fill this out and then reveal at the end? Uh, I mean, it's, your, it's your show. You, okay, you... We're going to do that. Yeah. So we're just going to take a, I'm going to just say what I'm looking for. And even from the audience, just throw out suggestions. We'll take the first one or the most impassioned one. Should we give any context for the erotica or just, no, we're, okay, it, we're rolling I, into I, it. I didn't even want to tell them it was erotica, but it is erotica. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> so, well, because we also, had, I, we had a bit of a theme queued up for it. Ah, cause like, did. I mean, as you know, because this is your show, like we, we agreed from the beginning, like segments segment themes is total hack shit right we're not doing segments wouldn't be caught dead doing right segment of any kind right so but during one of our recent streams when we were playing around with the robot voice or the like the vocoder thing kind of accidentally made a segment theme oh that's when you guys did an episode without me i was mad because it was my yeah that's right and we had the i was pego the pegging robot (laughs) wow yeah (laughs) i mean you come on you watch them all on youtube after right uh yeah i mean of course every is it still allowed on youtube uh yeah well i mean it's all just sort of implied pegging got it yeah uh so josh do we have the do we have the erotica theme it's not a segment there's just a theme and we've done it for like eight shows in a row uh, 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 whoa can i hear that again (laughs) oh it's time for the erotica We're gonna learn about a dildo. Guess where it goes. <laughs> that, that's production. That ain't DJing. Yeah. That's all the same. You just push play. You just push play. That's how we do this. That was fantastic. Cool. All right, shall we? Let's mad live it up. Let's do it. All right. I am looking for a bird. Audience, y'all be the hey, first. Anyone and everyone. What? Brab. Brab. <laughs> okay. Yes, that works. I mean, I really fucked up by giving away the theme. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I'm, it's okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. All right. I need a medal. Any kind of medal. Silver? Audience, silver? Sure. Silver? I like silver. It's going to be fancy. Um, a fruit. Mango. Nice. Yes. Good choice. Uh, a emotion. Lost. Like, <laughs> uh, I mean, you already know it's erotica, but we could do less. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I want you to forget that I ever said that. <laughs> we can't. And that's what you need to learn. Let's let's go from the image. Grief. Gr- grief. Yeah. All right. Sweet. I, I, I'm done dive. with that. Let's just pull someone off the street outside who doesn't know what the context is. And we'll make them do the Mad Lib. <laughs> Perfect. Oh my god. Okay, this is going wonderfully. Um, adjective. Audience. Transcendent. Transcended. Yeah. Transcended. Transcendent. Oh yes. And very nice. Um, a noun. Person, place, or thing. Desk. Desk. We're going to have to lean hard on not naming things that are just right in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> Your creative bounds are so limitless, Kelly. Yeah. Sick. Uh, a profession of any kind. Acro- dentistry. Acrobat. Den- 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 Acrobat dentist. 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 Yes. <laughs> It's like a, it's like a wolf of cancer, cancer acrobat dentist. You can be two things. Yeah, that no, the the cancer wolf is the acrobat dentist's pet. <laughs> uh, oh yes, the, the mango. Excellent. Uh, an appliance. Air fryer. 
<laughs> air fryer. Nice. Uh, a body part. Spleen. I had to head that one off the pass. <laughs> We're going too obvious with it. All right. We're making progress. Uh, with the appliance again. All right. Give me. Oh, no, no. I already got that. A different profession. From the Wait, what, wow, we what, already burned through two professions. We should have saved one of those. Did you put an acrobat or dentist on the first? I put one? dentist. Acrobat. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. That yeah, makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to switch them. <laughs> You're doing great. I Dude. am. We're all here for you. All right. Uh, a compliment. Like, like one word or like a phrase? Um, just a word. Pretty. Pretty. <laughs> Fuck yeah, so pretty. Dun, dun, dun. Super mango. Uh, adjective. Smelly. Smelly. Hell yes. Yeah. Love a good smelly. Um, an accessory. Let's get one from the audience here. An accessory. Accessorize us, please. Make a fucking like a fashion accessory? Uh, it just says accessory. Just, just an accessory. You, you know with what like, you spoiled about the topic might have the audience have some creative suggestions. Please. There we plug, go. Plug. plug. All right. Respect. Let's not dwell on how bad I fucked up and instead dwell on... We're not dwelling. How well I might do in the future. We're not dwelling. We're celebrating. Okay. We're celebrating how bad I fucked up? Exactly. All right. And now you're kink shaming. I just don't understand. Come on, Kelly. Okay, next word. All right. Uh, plural noun. Plural. Piles. Piles. Yeah. Sick. Um, I'm just going to open that list again. Oh, the butt plug. We just fell entirely with stuff from this list. Sorry? Can we just fill it entirely with stuff from this list? Like your your list? Of yeah. Me? Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean... Okay, that's what okay. I'm going to be shouting from. That's all okay, I'm going right. to tell yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. You can only use the list. Uh, adjective. Burnt. 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 And then the professional it's a dentist. Uh, a board game. Sorry. Swine pox. <laughs> <laughs> or pandemic. And an emotion. Uh, scalded. <laughs> what? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, we already said grief, right? Affrighted. <laughs> Affrighted? Yeah. Oh, yes. I'm just feeling really a scalded right now. Oh, I'm still scaldy right now. Well, you know, like they say, emotional pain works the same in the brain as real pain. You ever just like felt scalded by someone? No. By their words? No, I wouldn't. Like uh, the emotional equivalent of scalded, perhaps. But scalded, scalded? Well, what's the emotional equivalent to scalded? Not the same level that you can achieve with getting. <laughs> have you been scalded, Kelly? I think that's. Emotionally, yeah, 100%. No, no, yeah, I, no, no, no. I'm talking about physically. Have Probably you mildly? Stop, stop. Got it. Right. Okay, we'll go with mildly. So you have a, you've dipped a toe. You get a little steam burn. And then you claim you know, <laughs> just from a toe. Might a lot has happened. All right, do we, do we have more math? We're so close. We're so close, folks. Yeah. All right, body part. Weenus. Oh, oh, weenus. Weenus. All right. Weenus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. A city or a town? London. London. All right, a uh, a festive noun. A festive noun. Jog. Yeah, like a festive noun, like uh, a like, like a any Christmas holiday tree or like winter holiday or a pumpkin gingerbread a, house. A gingerbread house. All right, that's two nouns, but page what? two. So, no, am I it. holding the same one as you are? Yes. Okay, but but are we making them read from it? I mean, asking them politely to read from it. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get it started and, and you guys can okay. feel, feel uh, it out. Important first question for us. 
Is, how legible is your current writing? Not good. Okay. I was like, I kind of want to read it because I definitely... Because I was kind of watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like writing on a blanket. All right, good luck, have fun, and if uh, we'll see what happens. Cool. Yeah. Hell yeah, we will. All right, so this is a... Sorry, I wasn't listening. What's happening? We're starting. We're okay. Starting. We're going to do it. So this is a uh, passage taken from... Uh, Anne Rice, what is it called? Beauty's Release? Oh, okay. Now that we've spoiled that, can we kind of explain what it is? Yes, absolutely. So You know a lot about this book. Yeah, so this is a... Uh, so Anne Rice, who wrote uh, like a bunch of vampire books, one of them became Interview with a Vampire, like real whole-ass author and everything, wrote some... Is it fair to call them like extremely unhinged? Super horny. Erotic fan yes. fiction. <laughs> Radioactively horny was, I believe, the, <laughs> yeah. the word I used for it. That's, that's Fan sick. fiction of Sleeping Beauty. Um, and this was this book that the the like I went to the Wee Book Inn on White Ave, and I was like, "Do you have any like weird erotica?" And the guy was like, "Let me show you the back room." And <laughs> <laughs> he had a few ready to go, nice, including this book, and it is just like wall to wall just it's it's, it's very kinky uh um, you know I've, how i've just learned something what uh in cleaning up my mom's room there were four <laughs> of those books. wait hold on Let, let's hear wait, the story. okay we gotta take a detour for a second oh, I, yeah. okay the real cole's notes my mother passed about two and a bit years ago we were cleaning out her stuff to give the books back to a value village or another cancer so society and while cleaning i was just looking at a lot of the books and i do remember there was a couple of this uh, well-renowned uh, author uh, that was in that collection. And Anne now, Rice? Anne Rice? That's correct. Okay. Oh, she's written a lot of not erotica books. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought it could have been. Don't, don't let me stop you. It was just like this specific trilogy. Well, she wrote a trilogy in like the 80s and then did a fourth one in like 2019. So, like, still full gas pedal on the horny at the age of, like, 65 or whatever. So, really do, do you think that's her really trying to be like, all right, Twilight motherfuckers, you think you can do, do this? Probably. 50, Fifty Shades of Grey, you think you got this? And then uh, she's like, I'll show you. Yeah, yeah. well, th these books were horny in memorial before Twilight, I believe. Yeah. She wrote this, or these in, like, 70s or no, 80s? No, I think 80s. these were perhaps some of the inspiration. For Twilight itself. Oh, well. Like the writing of the novel. I, I have it here for you. Well, you now that like. we've sufficiently built them up, <laughs> so are you just reading the whole thing? Sorry? Are you just reading the whole thing? Uh, I'll, I'll get it started. Uh, my <laughs> writing is extremely messy. Right. Can so. we get like a really dramatic, like sensual voice from you? Uh... <laughs> like really sell me. <laughs> like if I bought erotica book on tape, I want something silky smooth and like yeah. smooth. Just Smooth so, is the only word I have. I have a quick question about that book. Is the narrator in this book, is it a, a who is it? It's very unclear because believe it or not, I have not read the book start what? to finish. You've read lots of it. I've heard you read I've it. read more of it than any human being should. What did you hear while he was reading this? Uh, well, he... What I've yeah, gleaned... It was, uh, uh, <laughs> what, I, what I have gleaned is that it is centered around Sleeping Beauty, who was no longer sleeping, so if anyone was concerned about that. Um, but She's straight I feel like, yeah. I don't know what you got, but the one that we, the last time we read from this book, uh, it was basically a gay sex scene between two people that were not Sleeping Beauty and she was nowhere to be found. This, I did not. So it really veers from the core, like, source material a lot. Yeah, and actually Sam knew a, a bit about this book as well, but there's like a whole pony boy thing. Have you have stumbled upon that part? Like Pony Boy, like the Outsiders character, or, or like a Sam? No, no, I, that's what I was like. Wow, he, he stays gold. He, they do. Um, they are like they are dressed up like horses and kept in stables, and they are they are fucked. And they wear oh, and they wear a uh, horse tail butt plugs. In oh, this book. In this book. Is that the scene we're doing? We're not doing that one. All right. Well, that's next episode. Yeah. Uh, way to bury the lead. <laughs> I mean. Don't worry, you can still read it. The, every single page of this book is horny as hell. Like, you, you, I really would like you to go read it, but you said you can go read it. The question now is, i.e. legibility, can I? I can. You can. You may, but can you? you is the question. Am I able? Th there's a point where I think I can handle it. Is it, it legible it enough? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's all take turns. <laughs> yeah, all right, let's do it. Um, all right, here we go. <sighs> I, <w> <laughs> I was made to grab 
the good sized silver mango was obviously chosen for me, and I stood with grief, watching as it was oiled, marveling at the detailed carving of the thing, the way that the transcendent tip and even the surface of the skin was beautifully realized. It had a round loop at the metal uh, of metal, a desk wide round be base at the end of it. So you're gonna miss. Uh, the acrobats never even glanced up as they worked. They expected a uh, quiet and total compliance. They inserted the mango, pushing it well up into me, and then put a long leather air fryer <laughs> on my spleen and brought my arms back, forcing me to thrust out my chest as they bound these air fryer, as they bound the air fryer tight to the desk. Um, and also to the base of the mango. <laughs> my arms are rather long, even for a man of my height. It's a dude. Um, and had they bound my wrists, it would have been more comfortable. But the air fryer was above my spleen, and so my shoulders were held back and my head held up when this was finished. I could see other moist, well-muscled dentists in the room <laughs> being, being manacled in the same fashion. In fact, there were only big, powerfully built dentists here. None of the smaller, more delicate ones. And their cocks were large, too. <laughs> and, and some of the dentists have been soundly thrashed. They had very pretty backsides. <laughs> I like that he just left the cocks in. Like, it's important. Yeah, that's important. I figured. Um, <laughs> I tried to yield to this position, to accept the way that forced, it forced my chest out. But it was hard for me. The silver mango felt amazing, amazingly hard and smelly. <laughs> Not at all like something made out of wood or covered in leather. Next, a large stiff butt plug was buckled to my neck. Well, yeah. Like yeah. The, the back of the neck? I like the how the, the mango was inserted, but the, the butt plug was just <laughs> a necklace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you do the same things over and over. You're going to get bored. You're going to want to experiment. That's true. It's normal. Very true. Experimenting by not using. The Continue, butt plug. sir, Mad Lib. Uh, one that had several long, narrow chin, uh, delicate straps dangling from it. It was loose, but very strong and rigid, and it forced my chin up high, and it rested firmly on my shoulders. Immediately, the long strap that hung, hung down in the back, I could feel this, was buckled tight to the mango. Two more piles running from a single hook on the front of my butt plug were drawn down over my chest and under me, past my body, uh, oh, past my spleen. <laughs> on either side, and they too were buckled tight to the mango. All this was done, <laughs> all this was done, burnt, and with efficient, efficiency. Hard I've... little pulls by the dentist, who then patted my weenus and made me turn around for a quick inspection. I found it infinitely worse than the easy passivity of the game, sorry. <laughs> and their eyes were moving over me, impersonally, yet not indifferently, further intensified by the feeling of affrighted. Should we pass off here? Uh, He's chomping at the bit. Oh. oh, no, I'm just walking. Okay. It's basically done. Um, I was patted again on the weenus, the mere touch bringing gingerbread to the town of London. Though it felt oddly good, and the, the dentist gave me a comforting smile and patted the tip of my cock. And th this is where I finished doing the Mad Lib. There is more, so we could theoretically do more. I have some questions about the the bringing the gingerbread to London. <laughs> yeah, what is the original thing there? Um, I think it was bringing. Uh, no, it was like bringing like tears to my eyes or something. I was like, we could bring. Something. Oh, it wasn't originally a festive now. No, no, like they like, weren't originally bringing Yuletide cheer to someone's like butthole or whatever. No, no. Okay. So this was an interpretation. Yeah, so I, I took a lot of liberties with this. Oh, that's fair. I mean, you could keep reading the unfiltered part if you want. No, oh, it's amazing. <laughs> um, there you go. Well, I want to hear your central voice. Like, I was hearing your silly stone voice, but I was patted again on the <laughs> in the parentheticals. I want to read body part instead of anything else. Okay, I was patted again on the weenus. The mirror bringing gingerbread to London. Oh, wait, which part? We... Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, and the, the you start from the phallus, I think. That was the, yeah, right there. That was the part where we stopped editing oh, it. Right there. That one. Right there. It says cock. 
The phallus seemed to rock inside me with every breath I took. In fact, every breath moved, moved the straps down that ran down my chest and moved the phallus slightly. I thought of all the cocks that had been inside me. <laughs> <laughs> They're neat. The slippery slope of them passing in and out. Oof. It is a very horny book. Excuse you can take that home, Luke, and finish it later. It's uh <laughs> Oh no, I, I have an ebook of this. It's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> and the phallus seemed to expand, to grow even harder and heavier, as if to remind me of it all, to punish me for it, to pro protract the pleasure. I thought of Lexus again, wondered where he was. How long had the whipping during the banquet been? And his, oh, had it been his only revenge? I flexed my buttocks, fleeting the cold rim of the phallus, feeling the smart flesh tingle around it. The grooms oiled my cock very fast. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. That's well. I can't think of a better way to end it than that. That's the that's the thrust of it. <laughs> very, very quickly, very fast. Yeah. Yeah. I should have gone deeper. <laughs> Always. Always. Well, I think it's about that time, Ian. Oh, we're gonna do some uh, some dice tossing. Yeah, I think we're I think we're past our half mark, so we gotta we gotta crank it out here. Right on. Gotta crank it out after hearing that story. Yeah, well, whenever you're Oh, yeah, you gotta do your jaunty dance because you're the GM. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Okay. We'll have someone take over your character. Sweet. Nice. Excellent. All right. All so right. Do you want to explain the premise and then we'll get into the characters? Sure. Uh, we were going to do some cowboy shit. We're gonna yeehaw, ye freaking haw. Uh, we're going to. Uh, are you just gonna use the pre-prepared characters? Yeah, I prepared some characters here. All right, so we got some cowboy characters for everyone. Yeah, and uh, we're going to. Uh, I forget all the moves and stuff like that. But are we just rolling dice when you, whenever you want to try and do something, kind of thing? Is that yeah, I mean you're the GM, so okay, whatever, right. whatever works. So we're gonna we're, we're gonna roll two d sixes. Uh, whenever we, I make a call on something that you're going to try and do, um, six and below is a failure. Six to nine is a mixed success. Ten and above is a complete success. We're going to do two d sixes. So you both have a. Pair He'll of tell you right if it's there. good or not. Yeah, and I'll give you a little pokes along the way. But basically, six and down, bad. Six and up, good. Varying degrees of good. Okay. All right. So um, I've created uh, two characters. So why don't I just like read one of them to you and you guys can decide who wants it. Uh, so we got here, uh, Jessamine Dirty Ears Goldblum. Uh, she's a, uh, an old prospectress. Oh. Yeah, so for her description, I put she's craggy, stooped, and filthy. She's got fewer teeth by the month. <laughs> A uh, former perennial big city beauty pageant winner, she ran away with a charming young prospector, and they spent many blissful years becoming old and grizzled together. He's since died, and she's only become more haggard and bedraggled in the ensuing time. Alas, he was always the gifted one at the trade, and she is increasingly down on her luck. Who's feeling that? Oh, and sorry, her unique talent is her uncanny ability to trap, bag, or snatch small animals. So nice. if, if you want us to choose, you should give us both. Yeah, yeah. I th oh, I wanted you guys. Okay. So the other one um, is Flint Steel, which is an alias. Uh, Flint Steel has a cold and rugged exterior, yet somehow a hint of elegance and grace beneath. Uh, Flint Steel's background is uh, a fearless, upstanding, crackshot gunslinger. She has taken to posing as a man in order to be truly accepted by her peers. She's not happy about it, but you know, old timey. I'll be, I'll be Flint Steel. All right. Oh, you're unique talent. You can instantly bond with any horse. Any, <laughs> any horse or horse? Uh, you know what? You, you're yeah, you're the your player. Discretion. It's up to you. You can change it. I got a, I got pencils here if you want to change it. I don't. Well, I guess, I guess your dirty ears. <laughs> All right. So it's only the underlined ones are me. And uh, there's there's people here and or watching the stream who have seen me do cowboy bit before, and I didn't want to be a hack. So I've created a new character here. Okay, perfect. Yep. Uh, this is a uh, Tug McCaller, um, <laughs> who is the um, 
the ba- the bastard son of a previous character of the show, Starch McCaller. Uh, he lives in an orphanage. Mother is a wealthy heiress forced to give him up. Father is missing in a deadbeat. Uh, and he has scrofula. So this is uh, a bit about oh, scrofula. I should clarify. This is like twelve years old. This is like a this is like a sick child. This the story itself. Or no, the, my character. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, but for my description, I just put frail, pale, and small in scale. <laughs> and for my unique talent, uh, I'm pitiful. So people pity you. Take pity on me. Yeah, I'm good at persuading in that way. Nice. Kind of big puppy eyes, and they see all my like bows on my neck and yeah yeah it's a real bummer nice it is <laughs> yeah okay great great shall we we shall yeah so what you'll see in your sheets is there are certain things that you're good at and bad at so whenever you try to do something he's going to just tell you that like well you're rolling on this ability and we'll cross that bridge when we come to it but oh so i'm not good at intelligence no cool <laughs> you pick the right character you know you don't have to act I'm bad at stealth, <laughs> strength, and intelligence. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, if you could use your strengths, I guess. How can I be intimidating when I am bad at stealth, strength, and intelligence? Because you, you talk a big game. But wouldn't that require intelligence? No, it just requires gusto. You just got to believe in it. Well, where's gusto? Intelligence is like <laughs> your... It's right next to chutzpah, can't you see? Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is a, trying to make it super inclusive. I respect. Yeah. Respect. Okay, shall we shall we All roll right. and things? I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, the the world that we're in, and then we'll get right into it. So, uh, you guys are uh, heading towards a town called Humble Humbleweed Falls. It's a remote town on the western frontier, known for its resilient townsfolk and its rough and tumble nature, a nature that has given the town access to an extraordinary source of power that many people simply believe to be a myth. Uh, by simply exuding grit, drinking whiskey, and spitting in a bucket, one can be imbued with these powers and pull off the impossible feats of rootin' and tootin'. Outsiders would call this pure hogwash, but the locals know it to be all too real. Regardless, many travel to this town to see if the tales are true. So, this town has a, a magical, um, thing about it, uh, where you do, uh, tough, tough rough and tumble shit, you get, uh, extra bonuses, and you can get more power, stuff like that. So it's a it's a video game. It's yep, <laughs> totally. Um, yeah. So we begin. Uh, you hear the rattling of coach wagon wheels as you stir from a long rest. You gotta go. You gotta go. As you, eh? okay. <laughs> well, if we're just starting the story, we could just swap you out now. Yeah, Would anybody like to come uh, be Flint Steel and Jessamine Dirty Ears Gold Bloom? We beckon you yeah, for we'll swap. Beckon you forth. Hi, friends. That's true. Hi. <laughs> Hi there. So what, 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 uh, what shows did you guys put on? What kind of electronic music shows did you guys put on? <laughs> None. All right. <laughs> wow, these guests are totally different from the last ones. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? We have diversity. No one can, no one can shit on that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that you guys know how to play. You both played, right? No. What? You guys aren't playing your... D and D together. I, I played before. I played with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What were we guys doing in Mexico if not sitting inside and role playing, <laughs> role Magic playing, fire. being in a more beautiful place? <laughs> All right. Well, it's really simple. You have a character. You just say what they're going to do. Yep. And then sometimes they'll make you roll dice, and we'll tell you what happens. And that's it. Okay. Cool. <laughs> well, let's try it out. All right. You hear the rattling of coach wagon wheels as you stir from a long rest. As you wake, you are reminded of your journey through the oppressive heat of the Cayenne foothills. A wave of spicy air hits your face as you hear from the front of the wagon. Hey, you, you're finally awake. You feel vaguely uncomfortable by the sentiment for reasons unknown, but you try and gather yourself and grab your bearings from your fairly dank sleep. What is this uh, smell of spice? Wow, that's the... The crisp, the crisp, spicy air of the Cayenne foothills as he takes like a big wolf and his like tears immediately <laughs> start streaming down his eyes. It's like, yeah, it burns. <laughs> it burns good. Are we OK to breathe here? Oh, certainly not. I would try and cover your mouths as much as possible. <laughs> but you and your crew were out for quite a quite a spell. Barely stirred when I hopped in in uh, Mule Springs. But... Yeah, seems like you're all awake now. 
Yeah, I, I don't remember much about what happened before that. Must have knocked my head real good. Yeah, all three of you were out cold. I I just assumed that you guys were all sleepy people, and maybe you maybe you what, had been assaulted, what third or maybe person? not. Who is what? this third person you're talking? Oh, about? I'm talking about uh, that <laughs> lady over there with the few teeth, and oh, that's the this, only other person I'm seeing, and the small child underneath that sack of potatoes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I rise from my sack of potatoes. It was just like covering me. Yeah, I think they probably loaded me onto this wagon, thinking I was dead. So I've just got the potatoes on top. Yeah. <laughs> so I I kind of like rise well i'm clearly struggling he with did not die by child child bed. child bed. <laughs> yeah it's a it's not, not, he, not sur- he survived child that's bed. right <laughs> oh, we're talking about that disease from europe m- mercy m- mercy sir i'm, I'm afraid i'm i'm not very i'm sickly. not gonna do anything to yeah you. we're not, not here to hurt not you. doing anything <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm sorry it's been a frightful long journey and i'm very <laughs> not feeling great Wow, you're a pathetic little thing, aren't you? <laughs> Pitiful. Well, you know, I may I may not be too strong or, or resilient, sir, but I am persuasive. <laughs> oh, really? If you can believe it. <laughs> hmm. Uh, yeah, roll persuasion to persuade him that you're <laughs> All right, persuasive. so I'm good at persuasion. <laughs> yes, so you get to roll twice. I'm rolling two numbers and I'm keeping the better one. Yes. Hang on a sec. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so my better one is a nine here. Nine? Yeah. All right, I can mildly see that from from what of the the pitiful nature of your being. That's right. <laughs> it makes me feel sympathetic. But but where are my manners? Uh, my name is Doctor Beans of the Beans Medical Institute. Call me Beans or call me Doc. Just don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> the uh, the Doctor Beans. Uh, that's right. Dr. Beans of the Beans Medical Institution. Wow, Dr. <laughs> Beans, I've read so much about you. Well, there's lots Can to know. Can you cure my scrofula? Scrofula? Yeah. No, that's terminal. Oh. <laughs> uh, but maybe I'm lying. Maybe you should roll persuasion. Maybe you should try to, yeah, persuade. Yeah. <laughs> persuade me to cure scrofula. I'm and pers- I might I'm, just do it. I'm persuading you to cure me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I got a seven on that. Persuade him to do the impossible. Seven? Hmm. I might do it. I might not. (laughs) Dr. Beans is a very busy fella. Well, yeah, I appreciate you keeping on, keeping me on my toes, sir. (laughs) Jeez, that feels terrible. (laughs) And sorry, ma'am, what might your name be? Oh, sorry, I was sleeping. (laughs) Wow, we were being incredibly loud. I'm very impressed by that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they call me Dirty Ear. <laughs> dirty Ears? What a name for a woman. <laughs> what? <laughs> why, why? What happened to your ears? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I forget. You, you know, honestly, you can, you're, you're an old prospectress. You can make up your own backstory. Mm. Yeah, do you think? How did you get your ears so dirty? Um, they're waxy. They just, well, they just waxy. <laughs> that is dirty. <laughs> well, maybe when, well, if you truly have waxy ears, there's nothing I can do for you now. But maybe when we're in town, you can come by the Beans Medical Studio. That it is clear open sinuses up. with this cayenne smell. I've heard of that. That's why I came here. <laughs> That's right. That now, is like, is the cayenne doing anything for my scrofula? I mean, does it make me more lively or like make me more sick? Scrofula. Yeah. Uh, well... Mm, scrum- Sorry, I was asking you as the, the GM here. Oh, oh. Uh, we know it's terminal. Right. Um, the severity is up to you. May- you might want to ham it up to get more sympathy from people, or maybe you. Maybe, All right. Maybe it makes you stronger. I, I just want to know. If, well, I know what I can pretend to do. I want to know if the, the, the miasma has like a real effect on me. Like the, the cayenne? Yeah. Miasma? Uh, yeah, your sinuses are clearer. All right. Yeah. All right. So I'm fi- okay. I, I'm good. Yeah. Okay, yes. <laughs> Perfect. Um, Not good. Just yeah. clearer. Yeah. Still got scoff. <laughs> uh, I've got very, very poor memory, so where, where are we going? Well, we <laughs> are simply minutes away from Humble Weeds Falls, one of the roughest, toughest towns in all the county. And I know the county because my father was the county president for <laughs> 20 years. Wow. The county president. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 
That's right. So, you know, if you need uh, a little bit of assistance or some direction in the town, I'd be happy to happy to help. But you're probably coming for the legends. Right? <laughs> of what? course. Legends. <laughs> the the I legends. You just picked me up and are taking it here. <laughs> well, I didn't touch you. You guys were already in here when I hopped on. <laughs> now, Dr. Beans is a lot of things. <laughs> Successful, handsome, well-dressed, but he's not a kidnapper. <laughs> Wait, we were already in the wagon? Like, did he steal this wagon? Nope, I'm not even driving it. <laughs> I'm just in the back of the carriage with you. Okay, can I, can I try to, like, pull myself towards the front of the wagon to see who's driving? Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, so you open up the, the front of the covered wagon. And yeah, like the just, limo thing. It's just, yeah, the little limo thing. Yeah. And it's just, like, like, a square of a man wearing a poncho. It's just, like, from behind, he's just, like, he's wearing, like, a little duster and a poncho, but he built, like, a fridge. He says, hey. <laughs> Hey, hey there, sir. Are we, uh, are we, are we nearly in whatever falls? Yeah, Humbleweed Falls, yeah. That's right, that's, that's what right. I was thinking. Well, sorry, the scruff uh, get, <laughs> gets to my brain. Oh, pitiful. You will, you will not fit in in this town. <laughs> they are the toughest, meanest group of people ever. You can even see on the horizon over there. And you can kind of oh. see, like, the, the, uh, like the saloon and all, like, the Western style buildings kind of, like, cresting over this like dune and there's just like people fighting and like spitting and just like guns are just like pew 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 firing off from the distance and you're like yep uh, it's a tough place i'm a tough guy too i'm the toughest coach driver there ever was ask me to do something tough and i'll t- i'll show you oh dear C- can you i want you to <laughs> punch out the first man you see when we park that's what i do anyways <laughs> we're on we're trotting and uh, just as the, uh, he says that, you guys, like, pull up beside, like, a little, uh, it was like a railway, rail yard kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, you guys kind of, like, lumber out of the back of the carriage, and this big poncho man just, like, stands out. He's like, hey, kid, uh, watch this. And he walks over to another square-looking dude, and he just says, hey. And the other guy looks at him, he's like, hey. And he's like, um, uh, uh, do you want to fight? He's like, uh, nope, not really. Oh, well, that's the polite thing to do. And then he just decks him in the face. And uh, he knocks out your driver, <laughs> just like on, on the ground. Oh, the other guy knocks yeah, yeah. out our driver. The other guy knocks him right. All right, well, that's yeah. one ally down. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, no. Why did you ask him to do that? <laughs> well, I look at, I look at the two remaining uh, people next to me who are the probably two most likely people that are going to help me out here. <laughs> And uh, apparently, say, I'm brave. Listen, so. oh, you, oh, it's brave. <laughs> you know, you, s- sir, you have that br- brave look about you. And uh, I may not be much to look at physically, uh, and uh, but I am intelligent, wise, and persuasive. <laughs> Perhaps uh, would you would you be my companions in my travels? I'm trying to be cured. Uh, that doesn't seem Unless we like have another a goal. great idea. You've just got this guy knocked out. <laughs> well, you're gonna get me knocked out. I've le- I've I've been learning because I'm very in- wise, <laughs> and I'll tell you, I'm I'm starting to get that. I have some <laughs> advice for for you, uh, Mister. Mister. What was your name? Uh, Flint Steel. Ah, <laughs> ah, the famous gunslinger, Mister Steel. Uh, don't punch the first large man you see, and I think you'll do fine. Uh, Stick with this I'm not sure lady. Still. She seems like she knows the lay of the land. Isn't that right? I've Is never been here before. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> And Dr. Beans has just been like looming behind you with his fingers in his lapels. And like, well, looks like you folks are looking for a friend. <laughs> yeah. oh, see, I don't Dr. have Beans any friends here. here. So I'm, I'm looking at you guys. And so you're far, I'm way more persuaded by you than this, <laughs> this guy over here. Yeah, I've got a degree. <laughs> <laughs> and my, did I mention my father's the president of the county? <laughs> Is it a real degree? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I'm convinced. Sure it is. A degree in what? A degree. Just a general degree. Oh, you know more than that. Most people I talk to don't know even what a degree is. It just sounds good. I'll be honest, I was bluffing. 
Yeah, well, it's all, uh, yeah, I've got a degree, so, self, self-appointed self degree from the Beans Medical Institute. I'm a doctor, so says me. You're a doctor? I'm a doctor. Can you clean my ears? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I could take you down to my new, uh, my new store, Beans and Bullets, and we can get those ears cleaned out. Oh, that sounds fabulous. Beans and Bullets is the name of your doctor's office? Yep. <laughs> Well, I heard the he- people here were tough, so I didn't want to look like some sort of pansy. So I Healing said, people. beans and bullets. Why not? <laughs> I- I'm sold. Let's go. All right. Can someone carry me? <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> I guess I could be persuaded to. <laughs> Will you carry me, sir? And I give him the big puppy eyes. All right. Yep. Persuade me. All right. Does uh, what do you have? Is it contagious? Oh, what, what, what is it you had again there, son? Uh, sc- scrofula. Well, that's what the last doctor told me. The one before was very racist and said I had the, the Dutchman's croup. So, <laughs> Oh, the Dutchman's croup. Oh, okay. It could no, be a that's... number of things. No, I believe it's you have to be Dutch to contract it, actually. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Belgian. Good for us. <laughs> oh, well, close enough, I still suppose. Still obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I have a degree. Um, I, I I could be persuaded to carry you, oh, potentially. Th- thank you, sir. Bless if, you. If you if you roll the persuasion roll. I d- oh yeah, I got a t- I got a I got a ten. Okay, okay. He's like, come here, child. <laughs> crawl, crawl into my arms. I crawl really like limply into his arms. Oh, you're so feeble, <laughs> pitiful. And he like just jams you inside of his suit, kind of like a papoose. That's um, cute. Do you want to be facing forward or facing towards his chest? Oh, I get to choose. Yes. Ah. Uh, Honestly, it's been a while since I had a hug because I'm a, like a disgusting, dirty, diseased orphan. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of I go with like the front, the chest facing the just so I can have a little bit of that like pseudo embrace. Yeah, right on. You, you, you do that. So you're you're like koala right on, just snugged right into his uh, shoulder there. And yeah, he walks you guys all uh, down like this like super dirty, dusty road. You can see that people are kind of giving you like the eyes are like crossing their arms and just like spitting on the ground in front of you. And it seems like everyone's kind of like looking to pick a fight. Um, yeah. So you walk by the saloon called the chiseled jaw, the post office called the mail man stables, the behooves me and the blacksmith, dirty Daniels. And then you get to the end of the road and you walk inside beans and bullets. And, uh, Dr. Beans fumbles with the keys and he's like, Oh, I'm very excited. I haven't even seen this place yet. And he like turns the key and creaks it open, and it's a, uh, it's pr- it's what you'd expect from like a a dirty, like frontier town. It's kind of like got some, some cobwebs and everywhere the dust coating all the furniture. Everything's wood, and there's some very primitive like surgical tools kind of like hanging around, like a hacksaw, a chisel, a hammer, um, and yeah. And he's like, well, it's not much now, but welcome to beans and bullets. Now, what am I doing here? Am I curing sprofiel? No, that's terminal. No, I'm cleaning out your ears. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> well, uh, take a seat right here. And he like kind of like pushes just a bunch of like tools onto the ground and clears up a spot for you on the bench. And he's like, just take a seat and I'll grab my equip- my, uh, my my precision tools and we'll get right to work. <laughs> Great. Um do you just use a cotton swab? And he just like, as you talk to him, he like squints his eyes and he's like, my God, look at your mouth. You have tooth. Just one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not worried about that. No, oh, oh, you're not concerned about that. All right. Dr. Beans wasn't qualified to fix well, that. I mean, anyways. single tooth is probably better because as we know, teeth will kill you. <laughs> teeth are lethal. So. You don't want to contract teeth. If you've got tooth, you're safe. And he's like, yeah, sure. All right. And then he walks over and he uh, picks up like a uh, some like tweezer looking ins- instruments and he like walks over and you're like now nah, let me clean out your ears and he's gonna roll to see how good he does cleaning out your ears fantastic I'm a great doctor <laughs> as he cleans them clear you can now hear the the, the spiciness of the air <laughs> Mad- madam what, what will we call you now that your ears aren't dirty uh, Jessamine please sure Jessamine sure that's a fine <laughs> name <laughs> That's my name. Fine name for a lady with a tooth. <laughs> yeah, please don't call me just tooth. <laughs> just tooth? Tooth is a great name. How does everyone feel about tooth? Toothy. Toothish. I think Jessamine. <laughs> what do you say, orphan child? 
Oh, I don't. I, she seems stronger than me, so I don't want to step on any toes. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> Democratic's the fair way. Jazzy mean it is. But in my heart, you will always You'll be, be the first one that dies by tooth if you do so. <laughs> I'll probably be the first one that dies if we're being honest, sir. <laughs> oh, right. That's something I wanted to mention to you. Now, the legends that somehow none of y'all have heard about, but you're here. Uh, there's magical powers in this town that can imbue you with immense strength. And I've heard healing potentials as well. That's why I'm here. So maybe if you can get enough of this power that's intrinsic to the town, you could heal yourself. Potentially, I, I don't of, know. I'm, what I'm kind a of doctor. <laughs> what kind of power? Uh, it's kind of the brute and tootin' kind. Like uh, the more more tough tough guy stuff you do, the the more magically powerful you become. Yeah, I'm a gunslinger. I, yeah. I have to do tough guy stuff. You certainly do, stuff. child. So you have <laughs> picked the best character for this dance. <laughs> okay, what kind of stuff? Oh, fighting, spitting. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, I I could spit, and I try to spit, and. It, like, it's like really <laughs> <That's> dry. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You, you got a lot of work to do. <laughs> uh, let me show you. I... Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, how big of a loogie, do, how impressive is it? Actually, roll for this. Okay. 2d6. <laughs> okay. Seven. Seven. It's, it's an admirable loogie. It's okay. all right. It's not... Not amazing. Okay. He's like, all right, what about you two? Mm. <laughs> Down my best. <laughs> Jezzerman, how much spit can you conjure? Nine. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then you spit an impressive loogie that covers the other loogie. <laughs> <laughs> Just shatters his loogie and sends it across the room. Yeah. And, and miraculously, you, you grow another tooth. <laughs> straddling next to the other tooth. <laughs> Whoa! The I, the, it's real. Uh, the legends are real. I've never seen something so so instantly happen, like in, in, in a med medical sense. Two tooth can't call her tooth no more. Teeth wouldn't be accurate either, though. <laughs> Just that's a little too much credit. Toothish. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, hmm. well, that's right. What's well, so up? I gotta work I, on my loogies. Gotta work on your loogies. Maybe you gotta find some some uh, people to fight or. Just, I don't know, whatever comes So we to just it. need to go and do tough guy stuff. You basically just got to get out there yeah, and do I, tough guy shit. I want to, I'm going to take the lead here. I'm going to like kind of uh, amble out the door as, okay, bye. as well as I can. <laughs> and uh, I guess like I go across to the, is it like a, there's a saloon here? Yeah, there's a saloon. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to go to the saloon and try to like order just whiskey. Just fucking go for it, Orphan. Yeah, yeah definitely. The chisel jaw you walk into. And That's there's the name of it? Yes. <laughs> All right. And uh, I'm assuming you guys are just in tow. You got to um, keep this Orphan. I was from... just going to ask. Do I have stuff on me? It doesn't, I don't see anything on the body here. Uh, I think you would, you'd have a gun. You're a gunslinger. I have a gunslinger. Yeah, so you, I was just you like, have a there's gun. There's nothing. Yeah. But okay. Give I have your, a you, have, you have a revolver. You, I pick up a hammer just for good measure. Yeah. Yeah, why not? <laughs> sure, you can borrow that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you walk into the chiseled jaw and it's like I should have borrowed a hammer. classic like swinging door saloon action. And there's like a, there's a guy on the chandelier and he's just like chugging whiskey and there's a guy playing a little old timey tune on a piano there's people like arm wrestling and like spitting on each other and, uh and it's classically as soon as you swing open the doors it's just like everything just goes dead quiet and everyone looks at you <laughs> they look at the orphan because right he's okay the charge. uh i i think i'm just gonna walk in like i own the place but also in a very sickly way <laughs> and sidle up to the bar and like try to put on my deepest adult voice yeah, so you managed to like clip clop your way across the saloon, and everyone's still just giving you daggers for eyes. And the bartender kind of looks at you, and he's like, "What? What'll it be?" I need a, <coughs> a whiskey. Sorry about my lungs; I've been smoking. <laughs> oh, that's that's cool. Actually, we <laughs> like that. And everyone's like, mm, "Yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, that's very cool." Yeah, he's like, oh, my "All right, way. all right. If you could smoke, you could drink. Prove it to us. Take take a shot of whiskey right now, orphan." Yeah, I take a shot of whiskey, and I I also want to like fumble in my pockets, like, "Oh, I'm, I want to persuade them, like, oh, I'm, I'm right out of smokes." See if somebody will give me some smoke so I can really prove it. Yeah, yeah. You sound like you've been smoking, but I want you to roll for an orphan taking a shot of whiskey. At what what is what, what is that? That would be. I don't have all the stats here, but like a, I, like a 
Resiliency. Yeah, I feel like it's resilience, which yeah, I'm yeah. bad at. Okay, then you roll it as a badge, which makes perfect sense. Uh, so that uh, that leaves me with a five. All right, you vomit instantly. <laughs> like the second it hits your tongue, you've never drank before. Is in your the vomit kind of like my spit, where it's just like, eh, yeah, there's nothing dry. in your tongue. Yeah. It's more like bile. You yeah. just kind of like bile onto the on the table. And he's like, what? What? That's not very manly, lack. I, you, you. I, I, what if you're just sick? What if you're not even a smoking kind? And everyone kind of like. A couple guys like stand up and like skirt their tables as you're getting like a little I can, crowd. I can smoke. Here. I can smoke. I swear. All right, then smoke this cigar right now. <laughs> do they hand me? Do they hand me a yes, cigar? Yes, hundred percent. All right. I I don't think the ch- child uh, like he's well read, um, but I don't know if he knows that you don't inhale a cigar. Right. Yes. So I feel like he's just going to take a huge drag on this cigar. All right. Roll for resilience. All right. <laughs> Uh, that's a six. All right. I don't know what that means. It's still technically a fail. Okay, but, well. Yeah. Joke's on you, so I've got no more bile to give. <laughs> so you're like, you cough in, in, in an ugly way. <laughs> like, you're like, <laughs> like really heaving and making it look gross. What, and, what's more manly than that? To, looking gross? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah oh. Like one guy kind of nods. And he's like, yeah, I, I get that, but. The bartender's like starting to get mad. He's like, "Look, I don't think you're cut cut out for this kind of town. I don't think you're you're. We're gonna we're gonna kick your ass, Orphan. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do now." <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen. <laughs> Drag us into his. Are you shit. are you guys with me or like? I'm just standing back, like okay, watching. I just wanted to see what you were actually gonna be doing. Um, but yeah, I was just watching the scene unfold and. I knew it. I knew you were going to get us in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you prepared for this moment? Did you think of anything clever to get ready for this scenario? Not really, but I do have a hammer. Yeah. And I'm thinking about using it if these guys... <laughs> All right, yeah. Start attacking. Yeah, yeah. The, the bartender is actually... He's the most mad because he, had, he, had, he believed in him and he feels like he's been betrayed. And he, like, grabs an empty bottle and smashes it on the table as he, like, starts to amble over the, the bar towards... Uh, our poor, or, poor or, orphan friend. <laughs> okay, is it is it my turning or is it on them or Not everyone? Anyone can go whenever they want. Yeah, I feel like I sucked up a lot of air with all of that vomiting. So, <laughs> yeah, you're like he- sure you're heaving. You're heaving on a stool right now, looking pretty pathetic. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna look at them with my big eyes to be like, please, please help, <laughs> do something <laughs> distracting. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of wandering around looking for, <laughs> looking for. You're like looking. I mean, your problem is solved, so I guess you can just relax. Like, <laughs> yeah. but I saw this like rat running around, and I shoved it in my bag. Nice bag rat, definitely, hundred <laughs> percent. You have a bag rat. Yeah. Oh yeah, because you, you're good at that. Yeah. 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 You never know when a rat. Oh, look at rats. her! <laughs> just grabbing rats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so cool. You know, yeah. I'm friends with her. <laughs> hmm i mean grabbing a rat is okay but it doesn't make up for the the insane faux pas that you have just made us endure in in, in, in tough guy shit well i guess it's time i'll be leaving and i just wander out the door <laughs> and he's like not so fast and oh, he like grabs no. you by the scruff with the he's got the bro- he oh grabs me God. by the Say, scruff whoa 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 and he's like whoa 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 we don't want no trouble here well you got trouble you can see that he's has cancer and wolf. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, it's, like, it's like those are both contagious. <laughs> yes. So, you know, <laughs> just stay away from him. He's a friend of mine. Leave him alone. He doesn't deserve your punches. <laughs> no, I, well, I don't ba- barely want to touch him if he's riddled with wolf and cancer <laughs> as well. Yeah, I point to all like the little like gross bubos on my neck, and I'm oh. like, "This one is cancer, and this one is wolf, and this one is scrofula. Which one you want?" Well, oh, well, you didn't say you had you were you were sick with wolf and cancer. That that's the manliest thing that you can do. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm starting to gain my confidence. Uh, I'm eight ways of sick. You don't want to find out. <laughs> sick in body and mind. I that's something I can appreciate. <laughs> 
And That's right. I'm sick in the head. Is there like a sharp object I can grab? Uh, yeah, there's like a little shard of glass from when he broke the bottle. Okay, so I take the shard of glass and I just like look him in the eye and I just stab myself in the hand. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, would, a, would a weak boy do that? <laughs> Good gravy, no. <laughs> well, I, I had you folks all <laughs> figured all wrong. I, I think you'll fit in just, just fine here. And like everyone's still just been like kind of looming and they all kind of like just start start to disperse to back to their original activities and and whatnot. And uh, the bartender leans over to you and he's like, look, I'm sorry for giving you folks a hard time, but it's just I have no patience for weeklies. <laughs> <laughs> it's it just does, how it is. <laughs> it does say that on the door. No weaklings. <laughs> That's right. And I try and honor my I'm a man of my word, so. Ah, uh, but you, you, you all, you all seem fine here. So, what can I, what can I do for you? Whiskey. <laughs> yeah, and he like slides you over a pint of whiskey. A pint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm internally debating whether or maybe well, I like, like, like well, you don't, you drink a small sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was that? <laughs> you don't like drinking pints of whiskey? <laughs> No, no, I, I love pints of whiskey. Sorry, I'm just argumentative. I already told you you're cool. But <laughs> I'll, I'll have another. <laughs> oh, oh, and he loves that. And he like slides it over. And uh, yeah, you, I drink it. You drink it? Are you going to drink a pint of whiskey? I, I'm going to try. Fuck yeah. I'm assuming this roll, is roll. Gonna... Yeah, I, absolutely. <laughs> oh, critical <laughs> success. Yeah, you like you, you down like the first pint of whiskey. And he's like. This is like wow. real life. I can do wow. this too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow, that was impressive. Before you can even get another word in, you grab the second one and just slam it back. And he's like, oh, <laughs> holy dad, that is some whiskey drinking. And he like does like a, a flourish with his cowboy hat. And um, uh, yeah, something, something you, nothing's particularly wrong with you right now, but you feel, you feel cool. <laughs> you feel cool. I do and feel, you feel cool. powerful. <laughs> and, Maybe nice. you could call upon those powers in a time of need. Just, just okay. Hold on to that. Yeah. Okay. Whatever powers you want in to. times of need. Yeah. No, I feel great. Yeah, yeah man, fucking frankly, <laughs> I don't feel needy at frankly, all. Frankly, I feel great watching you do that. <laughs> and what will be for you, ma'am? Moonshine. Moonshine, classic. And he like just slides over a pint of it, and he's like, "Yeah, we drink pints of that as well." A pint. <laughs> it, a pint. I Did know. I throw up from a pint or a shot? <laughs> Did you throw a shot? Okay. I don't know if I can handle it. Yeah, why did he get a shot? He's a, he's a child. <laughs> Look, I may be. A no, kid. no, sir, I'm a grown man. Uh, how old are you, you said? Uh, well, uh, I've been uh, on my own a lot. I've done lost count. I'm. Uh, <laughs> oh, right, yeah, that's right. I'm pro oh, wait, this still doesn't work. I guess I'm uh, 11. You look 12 to me, but all right. <laughs> Sorry, it's the sickness. I, I one for math. Oh, well, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, but what I'm really interested in is watching this, this lady drink a pint of moonshine. It's an eight. An eight. Yeah, you, you do it. You do it. You definitely get halfway through and you kind of like take a breather and he's like gives you an eyebrow. But then you wax it off and you, you, you manage to do it. And he's like, yeah. Done, done well. Done well. Not perfect. But well, that was easier than I thought. Can I have another one? You certainly may. <laughs> <laughs> and you slide to another one. And then I oh, and, oh, and uh, you get another tooth as well after you chug that moonshine. <laughs> yeah. Wow. wow, you you seem to be in tuned with the magics of this town. I'm sure you folks are familiar with it. Yeah, and and this guy is so cool. I'm, oh I'm yeah, so he's sick. I love him. <laughs> so far, so far, I have no reason to Thank dislike you. him. So far. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, drink another pint of moonshine. Do it. So, are we just like accumulating cool points as we do these things? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you, things happen to you once you. Will do like it. a bell go off once we've like done what we need to do? Uh, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Seven. Seven. Oh yeah, you, you you get it down, but this one's harder. He's like, okay, now don't don't try and impress me. It's 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 fine. But you do you get another tooth? You have a total of four teeth. Wow, I almost had my whole smile back. <laughs> How many did you start with? <laughs> Eight? Just the front ones. Just the front ones, ah, yeah. Those are the the good nibbling ones. Good yeah. for tearing meat off animals and whatnot. 
Yeah. Is it time to leave this bar? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm not I'm keeping you hostage. You can leave whenever you want. But... Those two pints were a lot. <laughs> I'm not feeling good. <laughs> <laughs> is is there like a um? Wait, you're 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 a gunslinger. Yes, M- Mister Mister Steele, sir. Can I uh, can I have a uh, one of your bullets? Uh, sure. Yeah, because I I can do more tough guy shit. So okay. I I take his bullet I and bullet. I put like the gunpowder in my bleeding hand. Okay. And I use like the the matches I use for the cigars, and I like cauterize my wound with fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, ah, oh, that, that's pretty tough. And uh, hell yeah, <laughs> God. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, roll to not cry. If you cry, he's is, gonna notice. Is that resilience again? Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, eight. Yeah, yeah, you don't cry. You you well up a bit. I, I got all the, like, body fluids out with the, the spitting and the vomiting, so there's nothing to cry yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just, it just is less dry, slightly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you do it. And, uh, you notice that, like, one of your, like, polyps on, like, the side of your neck has shrunken. Oh. You've successfully done a tough guy thing without lying about it. Lord. <laughs> and I, I, I stumble out of here because I feel like I don't want to push my luck any farther. Yeah. All right. Well, you folks, uh, just uh, I, fuck. I don't care. Cause some trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Sayonara. <laughs> Toodaloo, bitch. <laughs> yeah. I feel really full of piss and vinegar after that. Is there when we I, when we step outside of the uh, of the venue? Is there anybody on the deck? Yeah. Yeah. There's actually a, a fight is just about to erupt. You see, like a uh, a uh, a a tall, like classically. Uh, dressed pirate lady um, with like a big big hat and a parrot and all the buckles and all that shit. And uh, she's like pushing um, just this like gigantic uh, bearded man with like a plaid shirt and like suspenders. And he has an axe kind of like over his shoulder. Uh, what you're seeing is really like a pirate pushing a lumberjack. And uh, and uh, yeah, the pirate says to the lumberjack, he's like, I ain't got no respect for for you northern folk coming in across the border, chopping down our trees, smell reeking of maple syrup. <laughs> and Lumberjack looks back at her, he's like, well, oh, that's all slander, slander. It's not tough, it's just mean. You're just being mean. <laughs> and they're they're kind of bickering. Um and uh yeah, one another like pirate, like with the two, two, no, but two peg legs and two peg arms, kind of like waddles over to you. He's the same height as uh as me. You, you. And he's like, oh, this is going to be a good fight. Arr. He's not threatening me, though. No, I'm just excited about the fight. <laughs> oh, oh, sure, sure, sir. Yeah. Uh, I, you look like a betting type of orphan. <laughs> that, that's right. Would you like to make a wager? Who will win this fight? E- yes. Do, do, mm, can I say as my part of my, like, one of my items, I just have, like, money? Oh, yeah, you've got some orphan cash. My or- yeah, my orphan money. Yeah. Yeah, my orphan salary. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it pays terribly. Yeah, I'm gonna bet all of it on. Yeah. Um, like, has the, the fight hasn't started? No, no, they're just kind of pushing each other around right now. Oh shit! Uh, do I perceive anything in either of those fighters that might imply one of them is a better fighter? Uh, yeah, like, uh, I mean, yeah, it's like a, it's a pirate versus a lumberjack. I don't know you can make your own your own deductions. Maybe you could ask a. And, and and just as you're kind of like mulling over who's gonna win, like a uh, another lumberjack comes on the other side of you and like wraps his arm around you and he's like, "Oh, this is so, I'm not a pirate. Oh yeah, this is certainly gonna be a good fight, eh? Oh, it's gonna be a classic, classic lumberjack versus pirate action. Oh, but sure. I've never seen DeWalter ever lose a fight, so I'd be uh, I'd be right fucked to expect that he'd lose." And well, then the, the four peg leg pirate is like, "Well, I've never seen wretched Regina give up fight." Want to fight ever before as well? Every man that she's encountered has died instantly. So he's actually lasting longer than the other guys. And they're well, both it's like the slot machine that hasn't paid out. It's bound to pay out. So I bet on the lumberjack. Bet on the lumberjack? Yeah. Yeah, right on. Uh, yeah, so they're like, kind of like, they're still shit talking each other. And he's like, all right, I reckon we're, we're, we're due for a duel of sorts. And he's like, uh, yeah, yeah, it will be blood. And they like pace out onto the road, and they're kind of like uh, just like trash talking each other a little bit more. 
But um, uh, and you had no idea. But behind you, Mr. Beans is standing behind the group with, with his fingers in his lapels, and he's like, "Well, I fought already. I reckon this is the proper entertainment we've been deserving." Uh, did, did I see you, small child, wager on the fight? <laughs> That's right, sir. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> he just <laughs> saunters off. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I really added a lot. <laughs> it's good to hear from Mr. Beans. Dr. Beans. Now, if I can have a strategy in this fight, I kind of want to watch yeah. for a moment where I can, like, sabotage the pilot. Yeah, like, fixing the fight would be... Yeah, like, I kind of want to do that classic schoolyard thing, maybe, where you kind of, like, get your hands and knees behind someone, behind their knees, and they can just get pushed over you. Yeah. That's kind of yeah, what I'm angling yeah, for. Yeah, you want to try and do that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, do, do a roll to, like, stealth somehow... Uh, All right. Behind them. So stealth, I'm normal at. I got a uh, nine. Nine? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you like, uh, you just cover yourself in dirt and like, you're already so filthy and like spindly that like, mm -hmm. it's, it's. I just hard. look like a tumbleweed. I yeah, can, you like, ball up like a tumbleweed. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, and you like cover yourself in twigs and shit and you just kind of like roll out behind uh, the uh, pirate because you're betting on the lumberjack, right? Yes. Yes, right on. Um, yeah, it's about to go down, but you, you guys, if you have any ideas to fix this fight, you could also do it. Did I, did I mention bet, bet on the lumberjack? We're all on the same team, right? Yeah, I think I of how much we've helped money. each other. <laughs> <laughs> we've been friends forever. You've helped me. I've asked you for help. It's a very mutually <laughs> beneficial relationship. I go over to the little man that the, the four peg legged the dude. four peg legged dude <laughs> i like to place a bet on the lumberjack oh we got more wagers coming in yeah all right are you going to be foolish like the the wee orphan and bet on the lumberjack oh yeah <laughs> okay all right i'm starting to i'm being concerned now all right and then a Not couple solidarity of... mr beans <laughs> oh mr beans is always a betting man i bet my top beans on it that the lumberjack's going to win as well. And he just throws in a bunch of loose teeth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, with that, I guess uh, the uh, showdown is going down. I'm going to roll for them separately and see what happens. Oh, tragic. Okay. Yeah, so the, the pirate is like just, just getting one more off on the, the lumberjack. And he's like, you stinky. Uh, dumb f and like just redneck and he just like goes over he's like look are we gonna fight or not and he gives her a little shove and like classically she, like it's, it's the bully schoolyard situation she trips over the back of you and just smashes her head on the rock on the ground and I, just I, like I, you can hear a disgusting squelching sound as like her head just explodes on the back of her rock just to be sure I take that shard of glass I have and just like yeah. go for the carotid artery yeah <laughs> yeah right on <laughs> And like you, you surprise the shit out of the lumberjack. It's like, holy Dinah, where did you come from? And you viciously stab this already dead person in the throat. Well, if there's and, one thing I learned from the list, sometimes you have to die from like two causes just to be sure. That's true. Mur murdered and then stabbed. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, the four peg leg guy is like, oh no, wretched Regina, we were to be wed tomorrow. <laughs> ah! He runs off crying. Um, leaving the entire pile of winnings just in the in the middle there. And you feel uh, another polyp just kind of like suction into your neck and you're getting a little bit of color on your face now. Wow, well, that's, uh, that's about as much healing as I can take for one day. <laughs> I got the sense the sun is coming down. Ah. Yeah, about <laughs> five minutes. In five minutes. Yes, it's, the, the, it's, a, it's a sudden situation. The sun sets here. You can't be outside after dark. Oh, no, I wouldn't be doing that. That's another pirate just like emerges from <laughs> yeah. behind you. He's like covered in seaweed and shit. And he's like, oh, I wouldn't be doing that. No. Why not? A sure way to die. <laughs> or kill. You know, sir, we say the oh! same. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we've recently uh, had an opening for a pirate lord in our crew. Would you be t uh, interested in putting your hat in the ring? Pirate lord? Yes. <laughs> and he points to the, the pirate that was like dead in the... He's like, that was the old one. Wretched Regina was her name. She used to be bad to the peg leg, man. Sure, maybe. That but would, of course, mean that you'd have to marry the peg leg, man. That's pretty 
Yeah, I could do it. <laughs> All right, right on. I like this kind of enthusiasm. It's nice to see. For power, you know? Like, for power. For power. <laughs> and they all like... Pretty tough guy move. <laughs> That's a tough guy. Yeah, marrying a dude to get power is a tough guy thing to do, for sure. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. <laughs> um, yeah, so maybe it is time the sun is setting on this uh, adventure, and maybe it is to be picked up another time. My, my papa always said the sun sets just like a natural act break on the day. <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and the sun goes down. <laughs> All right, collapse in exhaustion. <laughs> Joy needs water. Get him a child bed. All right, you did it. How'd you feel? This one? Yeah, you got to. Hell yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we'll do our... Uh, do you guys, guys want to plug anything? <laughs>